Last week on the show, we had Brandon Gertz. This week, we are now joined by his opponent, Derek Campos. Of course, it's the main event of Bellator 181 coming Friday night, July 14th from the Windstar World Casino in Thackerville, Oklahoma. Derek, how's it going? It's going pretty good, Jason. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. Now, when I talked to Brandon, he he said something to me that I thought was very interesting. He said that this is a catchweight bout of 158 pounds and that you actually wanted this to be a 165-pound weight class, uh, catchweight bout. If that is true, why did you want a 165-pound catchweight bout? Yeah, initially I first asked for 165, 160-pound, uh, just because I had some medical issues going on uh, with my body, and uh, but I got them taken care of with my doctor. But for the most part, I just wanted to kind of – I want to – try and be easy on my body as far as taking out any water from it. Uh, that was really my main, that was my reason for asking for a catch weight. And they, they pushed for 158, even though I went to uh, ask for 160. And, you know, I said that was fine. You know, it just, uh, but it worked, it worked out in the end for me. But yeah, the main reason was just like a small medical issue with myself that I just, I felt like maybe if I could just avoid having to cut water weight from my body, it'd be a little healthier for me. Was there ever a a consideration due to this medical issue just not to fight on this card? Mm, No, no, I was, I was going to push, you know, do what I needed to do, push through, but I figured, you know, it wouldn't hurt to ask, you know, especially since, you know, nowadays they're, kind of talking about the possibility of maybe doing different weight classes in MMA and, and you know, if maybe we could do a catch weight, it'd be a good, you know, it'd be good representation, you know, it'd be, you know, show, it showcases it. One of those weight classes is 165 that has been talked about. Is that, would that be the ideal weight class for you? Mm, yeah. Yeah, actually, I mean, because honestly, like right now, I'm, I'm 164, 165. Um, so, I mean, I would have, like, med- physically, I feel great. Um, I'm healed up, you know. Um, it wouldn't be an issue for me to cut to 55 to 6 right now, today. But given the fact that, you know, it is somewhat healthier to not have to dehydrate the body, you know, 165 would be perfect, yes. But, um, I mean, until that day happens, you know. I'll keep fighting at 155. And you entered this fight with three wins in a row. Of course, the last loss was at uh, in the rematch against Bra- against Brandon Gertz. Uh, did not uh, did not was not a long fight. So uh, you know, after you had those back to back losses against Chandler and, and Gertz, did you have to go back to the drawing board at all? Yeah, yeah, I had to go back to the drawing board. I had to really get right in my mind and figure out what what I did wrong and where I stood as a fighter. And, uh, you know, I feel like with that opportunity against uh, Gillard, I really, uh, it, it just it just lit a fire under me. And uh, I'm just I'm just keeping that fire going. And, of course, you're coming off that win back in January uh, against Derek Anderson. And, and I talked to Brand about, you know, this fight and it being a trilogy matchup. Uh, did you always kind of feel like that uh, it was inevitable that, that you, you guys were going to meet for a third time? Honestly, I didn't, um, I really didn't expect to meet him a third time, you know, uh, especially since he's, you know, he's on a two fight losing streak. I figured they were going to try and I figured they would match him up with somebody else. Uh, but they ended up offering him to me. And so, uh, of course I'm going to jump at the chance to avenge a loss, especially that kind of loss. And, uh, but yeah, for sure. I didn't expect it, but since it's here, I'm going to take full advantage of it. When you get the phone call that uh, you know you're not going to face Patricky anymore on this card, and, and that you you in, end up learning that he's being moved to another card to take on Benson Henderson, what was, what was your initial reaction? I was definitely a little you know frustrated because I wanted to uh, also get that match uh, against Patricky back, but at the same time, I, I believe in the promotion. I believe in what Bolter is doing, and and. Uh, you know, as far as the fights that they make happen. And so, you know, my 
whole deal is I just I do, I go with the flow. You know, I trust the, what the promotion is doing. At the end of the day, they want me to fight somebody. I'm going to do it and go in there and take care of business and, and showcase what I can do. Obviously, as time goes on, you're always evolving as a fighter. You know how you know how you have evolved as a fighter over the years. But how how have you seen Brandon evolve over the years? Do you kind of feel like um, you're facing a, a very similar guy to uh, you know the first time you met him when you got the win there? Yeah, um, I mean, not, I mean, I'm not a big trash talker. I mean, I let my hands do the talking. But honestly, um, I feel like Gertz is still the same fighter. You know, he still has those looping punches, big power punches. He's still a powerful wrestler. Um, he has the same stance. He has everything to me seems the same. Um, so, I mean, come next Friday, it's going to be my job to quickly assess the situation and see what he's got new to throw at me and uh, figure him out from there. What do you think he does the best? I think he's just real explosive. I think that's what that that is where he's real good. And when he explodes and he comes at you, exactly how he caught me the last time, that's his thing is being real explosive. But at the same time, it can it is also his weakness because he can real tire himself out. He is he's he's like a you know a loaded gun and he just fires off and then that's it you know so. It's his advantage to be explosive like he is and powerful, but at the same time, it's his disadvantage. Generally speaking, how how do you take away the explosiveness of your opponent? Is it just basically trying to be the guy that's always pushing forward? Is that the, the easiest way to kind of describe it? Uh, yeah, I would yeah I would describe it like that. Uh, be the one, be the aggressor, be the one pushing forward, but also at the same time. Uh, without blowing, you know, your, your, your load, like without me blowing my energy, you know, fight smart, fight, fight smart, fight fast and, and, and just outwork him, but from a technical aspect as well as a physical aspect. Now, when you say fight smart, what does fighting smart mean to you? Fighting smart is, you know, using the right angles, using the right combinations, Seeing when you're seeing when his wheel is breaking and pushing further to break him even more until he completely breaks. And in terms of of how you get the victory in this matchup, do you have you has it been that do you just visualize it all going down the same way? I know this is a, a short notice fight in terms of preparing for for Brandon, but have you visualized it going down a certain way? Absolutely, I, I envision it going down you know, different ways every day, you know, whether I'm I'm in the gym doing my strength and conditioning, whether I'm on the mat rolling, whether I'm running um, outside, getting my miles in, I envision it. I envision, I envision knocking him out. I envision choking him out. You know, I envision everything. Every possible way I can win against him, I envision it. And uh, that's what I plan on doing come next Friday. And a victory will give you four in a row here. So where where do you think that puts you? Where, where where does that put you in the lightweight title picture? I mean, do you think you're basically right there? I mean, where where do you you know? And if you're being realistic, I mean, do you think that uh, you know maybe it's it's one more fight after that, and, and potentially you're looking at a title shot? Yeah, I feel like uh, with this fight, it definitely seals the book on Gertz and puts me keeps me moving forward to continue to fight the top guys in the division. And uh, ultimately I would like to see, uh, you know, God willing, I'm the winner of this fight. I would like to see the the winner of Pitbull and Henderson. I would like to face one of those two guys. And if I don't get one of those two guys, then, you know, the likes of Piccolotti, I would love to face or Steve Corvallo. Um Just the top guys in the division that way, you know, I keep my momentum, my momentum going. I keep winning, and, and two, three more fights, however many, I don't care. As long as when I get to a title shot, there's no doubt in anybody's mind that I deserve it. But first up is Bellator 181 coming on Friday night, July the 14th, live on Spike, as we will see Derek take on Brandon Gertz in their trilogy matchup. Derek, as always, I appreciate time, and let my listeners know where they can follow you out on social media. Uh, follow, you know, 
everybody can follow me, you know, on DC3 Stallion MMA 88 on, on Instagram and uh, DC3 Stallion for Twitter. And of course, you can find me on Facebook. I'm going to create a, a fighter page on there. And so like it when I do and, and just uh, keep joining me for the ride.